Hey, hey happy campers. campers. Welcome back to Camp Shady Birch at week 21. I just saw an owl in the sky and he looked down at me and he said, you're doing a great job. <laughs> That's just the shrooms kicking in. Could you imagine if we did this on shrooms? Oh God. Oh, I don't think I would do well. I think I would do quite well. Hey, maybe we'll do that in a future episode. Yeah. If you want to see that, let us know. Anyway. <laughs> But we had quite the exciting week. Zach, you want to you wanna take it away from Monday? Wow, we're going to hop right into it for you guys. Yes, this was a, we had a hectic, hectic week. All really good things. We alluded to it last week. We had a lot of work done this week at Sirius XM. So Monday, like I told you guys last week, I got to interview the cast of Jersey Shore. It was crazy. So I woke up at like 5 a.m. on Monday because I was so stressed. And like, I don't know how you guys feel, but if you have something really important to do in the morning, I have to be up for like hours in advance to make sure that I'm like fully awake. Yeah. Like I rode six miles in the Peloton just to make sure that I was like good that morning. Um, So we got there, I think at like 940. Yeah, um, yeah. You drove in for us. Thank you for driving. I really appreciate it. Of course. I got you with the Tokyo drift. Yeah, you really did. Tokyo drift. Because you were like, oh, I, we might be like a little bit late. And I was like, no, we're not. Yeah, I got you. You ran through them red lights and I really appreciate that. Um, Yeah, no, we got there and um, the entire crew was really great. And I was supposed to start at 940. My interview was supposed to start at 10. Um, but I kept getting pushed back. I guess I was low priority on the list. Understandable. I can't be Andy Cohen. I really can't. I can't. <laughs> no, not so, Andrew. No, I'm not going to be Andrew Cohen. So yeah, the whole cast was there doing interviews at different parts of the radio station, or at least half the cast was there. So my initial interview was supposed to be with Snooki, Wow, and Vinny. But since I got pushed back so many times, Snooki got pl um, plucked from my interview. Oh, the old Snooki pluck. I was a little bummed because I was excited to have all three because I had questions specifically for her, but I was just happy that I still got to interview um, Jenny and uh, and Vinny. It was so awesome. But you know what's crazy, guys? Like, by the time they came in, it was like two hours later, which I didn't care, right? Because we were just vibing. I was just excited to be there. But um, they finally came down from their other interviews. Uh, and Jenny was immediately waving at me, came over, took a photo of me right away. She was like, how are you? Because we've been friends online for so long and she made me feel so cool. And then um, we eventually all went into the room and it was like this big open setup and they sat down and we were in our little seats and there, everyone's kind of looking at me and I was like, oh, when do I go? And they're like, oh, just start whenever. And I was so nervous because it's just like weird to be in an empty interview space. I don't know. And they, they look at you and they're like, Go. Just, just go. Yeah. So I feel like I kind of blacked out in a good way, and I kind of just like let it go. And I only interviewed them for like 15 minutes. Um, that was like my time to do it, but it flew by, and they were so great. They're professionals. Yeah. yeah, they were really nice. But I was kind of bummed because while you were in there, I was on the out like outside of the fishbowl watching, and I thought I would be able to hear you because usually they play it through the speakers, and they didn't play it through the speakers, so I didn't even know you had started because it looked <laughs> like you guys were just like joking around and haha. -ha. And I was sitting with Emma, and I was like, did they start yet? Like, are we going to be able to hear it? I was like, oh, I think they're going and we're not going to be able to hear it. So uh, when it comes out, it'll be the first time that I heard of it. But it looks like you did fantastic. And I'm sure you did absolutely fantastic. Thank you. No, it was really fun. They made me feel really comfortable. Like Jenny, like in the first like two minutes of it is like I was like talking about her and she's like, well, how about you? You're so great. And I was like, Jenny, don't put this on me. I don't know how to handle this right now. I have a very structured interview here and you're veering off course and I'm getting nervous. That's the one thing that you don't anticipate with interviews that the best interviews are good at is knowing that you have a road a roadmap, but when things go awry, you have to swing with it and kind of go off course and then bring it back. So um, I left feeling really good about it. I always am a little critical of these kind of things. I always wish I did better, but um, I have done other things that I have not talked about on this show, particularly with media where I've done it and I've like looked at you afterwards and I was like, I bombed that, I bombed that. And I didn't feel that way. Yeah. So I know it's going to be good. I'm happy. So when it comes out, We'll let you guys know, but um, JWoww was just, she was so sweet. Vinny was so sweet. They were so funny, and I'm really proud of it. Um, and it was really exciting. And that wasn't the only thing we did there. We got to come back the next day. Oh, yeah, wait, hold on. Wait, let me just rewind because while we were waiting, you were downstairs or something. And guess who walks in, everybody? Sarah Michelle Geller. Oh my God. I so badly wanted to run up and be like, I was just recording my podcast yesterday and I was talking about you, but I didn't. But she was there and I like, I could hear my heart beating through my ears, which I've never been in shock before and had that happen. And I feel like I wouldn't be someone who's starstruck around people unless it was Dolly Parton. But I was like, <gasps> 
because she walked in and I thought it was going to be like the cast of Jersey Shore who uh, are amazing and and do take my breath away. Don't get me wrong. But this was like I unexpected. And I was like, I was just talking about you, girl. Well, that makes sense because when I saw her, I was telling you that was her and you looked kind of like unfazed. And I was like, wait, why are you not gagging? But I think you were so overwhelmed that you couldn't process it. What can I say? I know. She but looked great. She did. I wanted to. And I, I like waved and she smiled, but I don't know if she smiled at me. Or if she smiled at someone behind me, but she I was like she close smiled enough. At you. And then she started walking, and I, I, I was like, oh, maybe she'll think she, maybe she'll walk into the wrong like room, and she'll come in here. And I was trying to manifest it so bad, but I wasn't manifesting hard enough, so I'll have to work on that. Um, so I didn't get to to see her, um, but I saw her in the distance. Yeah, well, you saw her in a room shared by like maybe eleven people, which I think is intimate enough to know that she was looking at you, and she was like, hey. I can feel that you have an animal in your house that's named after me based on her really witchy powers. So she knew it was you. Slay. It was cool. I, Sirius XM, like there's just a rolling door of like very famous people there because they had, I, how many radio shows are filmed there? Gotta be at least like 15, 20. Probably, oh, yeah. Oh my God, a lot. Well, Monday was a big day. We left and I couldn't stop smiling for the entire day. It was so exciting. Yeah, you were on cloud nine. <laughs> and then we came back Tuesday. The next day. Yeah. And we, um, that's when we hosted the radio, the, the Valentine's Valentine's Day, which I still don't have. If we have details when this comes out, we'll put them in the show notes or something. But we don't have all the details just yet. But it'll be out on Valentine's Day. And we got to host it. And we hosted the radio countdown. And then we gave advice, which was fun. Um, and then, yeah, we had a, our interview with with Davis. Yeah, it was really crazy. So on the interview part of the, um, like the advice part of the countdown, the producer was like, really insisting that we read the people's names. And I feel like it might be a couple campers because I feel like campers would do that. Yeah. Because we shared it and I feel like it's people who definitely knew who we were. So some people wrote an advice and he kind of vetted them and he said he reached out and was like, hey, like if they wanted um, to do this, I said that we had to say their name. So some people, I couldn't believe the intimate questions people asked and then said, yes, say my name. Like it was like specifically about their husband. And then we like said who their Instagram handle was. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I guess we're doing this. And we did it. We were really, you were so on fire during our Valentine's Day countdown and our interview. And I feel like this was kind of like, this was like your first big, big thing. Yeah. And thanks, you man. slayed it. I was so proud of you to see you so in your element. You weren't in your head at all. You really were. You did a Thank great you. job. Yeah. And then afterwards, they're like, you guys need your own show. You guys need your own show. I was like, first of all, we have our own show. But if you want to move Camp Shady Birch <laughs> to <know>. Sirius XM, <laughs> we will do that. We will. Stop. I'm like, stop saying that. If you put your money with your mouth, this, hey, all right? The, the producer said it twice. And I was like, hey, well, 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 now I'm not going to say no to that. So if you want to follow up, you have my email. I feel like it was cool. I feel like this podcast really prepared us for that. Like, I don't know. It just prepared us to do that. And I'm really proud of it. And I'm excited. And I know this is a very self indulgent weekly catch up um but it was it's what we it, the reason why we do what we do is to get these opportunities to kind of grow as creators and people who just love to be in this space and i'm just really proud that we got to like do something out of the norm yeah. you know what i mean yeah and that ass like not to sound corny but like it's because people like you like watch and and listen and give us a platform that we're able to to do these things a hundred percent if it wasn't for camp shady birch we wouldn't have gotten that opportunity there's no way because it's because of the podcast that we got asked through the valentine's day show and the interview you know what i mean it's because of these interactions that we have with you guys that we get to continue our dream so just thank you for being here and making a really fun week and we have a great show for you so moving forward let's jump to morning announcements Attention campers, please meet at the old flagpole under the tall pine for morning announcements. Attention campers, we have something serious to discuss. The sheriff's deputy police station office called me and they said they've been receiving multiple complaints from the west side of camp. What camp cabins are on the west side? Uh, cabin 21 through 84. 21 through 84. Okay. You know that it has to be a no noise policy after 12 p.m. We were getting music complaints at 3 a.m. What were they playing? Not the Spice Girls. Because that, we would have let that slide. Okay. If you're going to play music that loud, it has to be the Spice Girls campers. You know the rules. This is Camp Shady Birch. We are pro Spice Girls. Anyways, moving forward. What do we have for <laughs> housekeeping this okay. week? Housekeeping. Uh, so hang on. I got to close this for this. So in the last episode, during Take a Hike, I was talking about Daily Mail. You were. And I was discussing Sarah Michelle Gellar, SMG, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And in that segment, I said she was at a premiere with her husband and former 
Buffy the Vampire Slayer alum, James Masters. Now, when I said that, it was actually two different clips when we were doing this in person. Like we had cut it because I messed up the first time we did it. So what I was saying was she was there with her husband, comma, and then a separate person was and her Buffy the Vampire Slayer alum, James Masters. <clears throat> I received a no less than 10 DMs to my personal, three DMs to the CAM counselors, and even a few emails to camcounselorpod at gmail.com of people telling me, basically like ripping me a new one that I was calling James Masters, her new husband. I think I want to thank you because it's fans like you who are diehard Buffy the Vampire Slayer fans who would go out of their way to reach out to, to point that out. Someone was even like, the Daily Mail got you, but they didn't. That was just, it was a flubbing of the mouth, as one would say. So just want to clear the air, that's my housekeeping, that I am aware that Sarah Michelle Gellar has been married to Freddie Prinze Jr. for about 84 years, and James Masters is not her husband. That is not what I meant. Is Freddie Prince Jr. in Garfield, the live action? Jennifer Love Hewitt is. I think it's Freddie Prince Jr. who plays. No, it's not. Actually, we're not going down this road again because then we'll be doing housekeeping on top of housekeeping for yeah, we're gonna, misinformation. No. Anyways, we love Sarah Michelle Gellar. And you knew what you were talking about. You just had a little misstep. You're the biggest fan ever, I'm pretty sure, other than Whoopi Goldberg. So, But I can all, I can absolutely see how it sounded like I was saying that. <clears throat> well, whatever. Whatever. Do you have any housekeeping? Do you want to keep don't. this house? I'm going to keep this house. I'm going to, um, yeah, I'm going to keep it. Okay. So what do you got for morning announcements? Um, this week, I have a really interesting article that I found on Ripley's.com. Ripley's, believe it or not, believe it or not, there was an article written called Raising a Family Under the Big Top with the Venardo's Circus. So this is the cutest story I've ever read in my entire life, and I am so obsessed with it. Essentially, there are these three couples that have started this like small circus, and they all are kind of raising their kids on the road like carnies. And I just feel like circus as an art form has really died. And I think the, the more generations that go on, the more we lose the love of it. And this family, the Vernardos, has really kept it alive. So first of all, Kevin Vernardo is the founder and ringmaster of Vernardo Circus, okay? At age 22, Kevin Vernardo became one of the youngest ringmasters in the history of the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and & Bailey Circus, okay? Wow. He's married to Marianne Eves who was the first female master bourbon distiller in Kentucky. And she continues to operate a mobile lab to blend her signature spirits. Okay. So he runs a circus. She's on the road on mobile, mobile market over there, making her little, her little Kentucky bourbon with the kids. Okay. And then there's another couple who are like this. She's like a tightrope worker. And then he does this kind of comedy show. And then they have like a four-year-old and a one-year-old and the four-year-old kind of helps like his dad in the comedy show. And then the one-year-old at one point will like bring the little like shoes for like her mom on the high rope. And then there's like another couple that's in this like small intimate traveling circus who also have kids and they do like a, like a family duet and they're all like on the road raising their children, but also like keeping the love of circus alive. And they all kind of met like in the circus world. It's a very intimate space. And I just feel like TLC should contact this small new circus and start a show. I would watch the shit out of that. I know me too, because like not only are they like quirky and kind of weird, like what a weird dynamic. They're also super talented, but they're like also have this like very normal aspect of raising a family, but like interesting, like on the road, but also as a circus family. Toddlers and trapezes. Toddlers and trapezes. That's a working title right now. I've just submitted the family to TLC. We're going to see what happens. But I just thought that was sweet and tender. You know, you don't hear much about traveling circus anymore. You're what, right. What happened to the circus? You grew up, but you were born in 1993. So tell everybody what happens when you're born in 1993. Uh, I don't know exactly why, but you get like free tickets to, was it the Ringling Brothers? I'm not sure. My brother was born the same year as you, so he also received the same voucher. Yeah, I don't I don't know what that was about. I sh We should look it up, but... It was every... the 100th year anniversary of either Ringling's or Barnum & Bailey's. Are they the same thing? I'm not really sure. No, they're not. They're not the same thing. Oh, no, I think it was Barnum & Bailey. That's what it was because I had never gone to to one of their shows. And then I think it was my 25th birthday. We ended up going. And now they're like slowly starting to like depart and they no longer exist. But this family is keeping it alive. And he says like his circus is different because like in a smaller intimate kind of setting. So I'm not really sure. I would vi I, I think I would visit this circus. I'm not a huge circus person, but this story 
sells itself. I will say the only thing I don't really like about the circus is the animal situation. And I know that that's why a lot of them were like doing away was because they had, well, there were accidents and then people basically like going on strike and being like, this is animal abuse. A lot of the times that it was, oh. but you can do a circus without animals. I feel like people would have gotten pissed if there weren't animals and they were expecting them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't do enough research on this exact circus, but in this article talking about each of these like partners' talents, I didn't see any animal representation. And there better not be. There better not be campers because then I'm taking it back. But for now, of my knowledge, I'm intrigued. Unless it's a handsomely paid poodle who can walk on his hind legs. I'm down for that. I do love a handsomely paid poodle walking on his legs. I can just see it walking around looking for its little biscuit, little croissant. If you were in the circus... What do you think you would do or what do you think you would be good at or what do you wish you would be good at? I wish I would be really good at unicycling in a very dramatic, beautiful way. We saw unicyclers at Cirque du Soleil, which is kind of like the modern day circus now. They really took over. Um, but I love just the art of unicycling, but in a stunning, never before seen, beautiful way set to color theory, music and wardrobe. What about you? Wait, have you ever unicycled? I feel like no. if we if we can ride a bike, it might be kind of we might be able to master it. No, I I think that's I think you're being presumptuous there. I don't I can't even swim. I can't even ice skate. <laughs> you think I can unicycle? Work your way up and that's too advanced for me. I'm good at laying down. I'm good at watching. I'm good at clapping. I'm good at supporting from the sidelines, okay? I'm an active listener and I'm an active audience member. I will always ooh and ah. I will always Ooh and ah, and anybody. All right, that's fair. What What are you gonna do at the circus? I would, sell peanuts. I well, oh my god, the circus peanuts, the marshmallow ones. Fuck, those those are gross. I think I would love to be able to juggle. Oh, I think you could get used to that. You know how sometimes they like let them bounce on the ground, and then there's like six of them, and they're like, oh, can he handle one more? And then I'm like, of course he can. He's been doing this for years. I I don't think I could handle it though. We had to learn it in gym class in middle school with the um. The ribbons? No, it wasn't ribbons, but it was like a, a light material, like a, almost like napkins. Yeah. But cloth. Uh, we did crisscross applesauce and I couldn't get it. Oh, I did that in middle school as well. And I was also, I was actually really good at that. I didn't think it was that hard. Um, I think I'm just program different. I'm not good at juggling things like quite literally. You're good at a lot of things, but maybe the circus life isn't for you. So maybe we'll just visit their circus instead. Okay. I like that idea. All right, moving right along. So my morning announcement is titled Authentic Splash Mountain Water Sells on eBay After Ride Closes at Walt Disney World. I have so many questions, but I think you're going to answer a lot. Just get into this one, please. Ew, what? So uh, January 23rd, 2023, Splash Mountain closed. So they closed it and they're going to redo it into Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which I think is going to be fun. I think it's going to be better. Okay. Splash Mountain's a racist institution. Yeah, it was fun. It was made with poor. I don't know. It was like, it was not the right call. It was definitely time to close it. The say it's going to be the same ride style, but with a new beautiful theme for Tiana. I'm so in support of this. Yeah. Cause it was based on Song of the South, which is a movie that you can't even purchase. You can't, you can't even get it in the United States. They were like, Oh, that was really bad and really racist and really in bad taste. Yeah. Let's make a ride out of it and have one surviving song and that's it. So regardless, the ride closed. It was a fan favorite. So there were a couple of jars of quote unquote authentic Splash Mountain water that popped up on eBay. I found one that was being sold for over $10,000. Any bidders? Yes. <gasps> no way. Plus $9 shipping and handling. You, where do they get off at this point? And I'm also really confused because most of them, they were coming from different sellers, but were using similar or the same exact picture. There was one, it was like a picture of someone holding up the jar and they were clearly like at Disney World and you could see the sign in the back. And then the rest of them, I was like, why are there so many using the same exact picture? So I, I have a theory. I think these are I think these are false because they're watching you the entire time. Like there is some small parts in the ride where you're like kind of in a corner and you could just scoop a little mason jar up in there. Um, but I feel like they would have caught that, you know, or maybe they just didn't care. Yeah, or the, a couple of them are authentic and the rest of them are literally just tap water that people are are going to be paying for. Yeah, how do you really how do you really like um I don't know, how do you authenticate this? I don't know. Also, I'm sorry. Th that water is the same water that's running through half the park, okay? Like I'm sure it's a cycl cyclical water running into different moats and stuff. Is it it's just it's it could be Disney water, but is it 
You know, what does it matter? I can tell you what water I would buy. Oh, you always talk about this. The Pirates of the Caribbean water. That water, that I'm sorry, that ride smells so good. Remember we went on a deep dive of people trying to recreate that smell of the water on candle and yeah. candles? Yeah. That's hysterical. There was a woman that wrote the most insane 19 paragraph review about that. And she was like comparing these different companies. And I read the whole thing too. And you were like on the edge of your seat. Yeah. Because it, it what was it? It was like the sense of like the actual scent that they add plus bromine instead of chlorine, plus but a little mold. bit of chlorine and musk. Yeah, there was like different layers to it. It was I, really weird. I do want to buy one of the candles. Though. I think that would see that I would maybe not ten thousand dollars, but like maybe ten dollars. I would buy some of that water. It just smell. I always get so I get like a headache because we will be sitting on the ride and I'm like, <sighs> does anybody out there know what I'm talking about? The water that ride just smells so good. That one does smell good. So where does this end? How many jars are for sale? How big is the jar? Can you give me a little like rough estimate? Can you tell? So there's some that are literally like water bottles with a child's handwriting on the outside with Sharpie. Some of them are like smaller jars, uh, like peanut butter size jars. Some are like tiny samples and the it's, it's just like completely all over the places in prices. I will say though, like the fandom of Disney is so insane that you, that is a collector's item. If you can authenticate it and you can really prove that it was there, 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 like of all things, there is a market for it. Am I in this market? Absolutely not. I love Disney till I die, but I'm, I'm not going to be purchasing jars of water from a ride. First of all, it's all sweat and dirt, piss and tears and fights divorces imminent after a really bad vacation yeah. i don't it's bad juju you know it what is. i mean i want tiana's water i'm yeah. excited for that ride i really am i love princess and the frog and i'm really excited for this change for disney um yeah can awesome. i can i just redo a few quick facts about the ride give me a bunch so it's been open i honestly didn't check to see i know when how it's many, been open what year since i i honestly you might think i'm lying i believe 1993 Probably. We'll yeah. go with that. Why not? Happy birthday. Get your Barnum and Bailey's ticket. Um, there was only one fatal incident, and it was in 2000. November what happened? November 2000, there was a 37-year-old man who stood up in the log flume um, while it was still moving, and another one collided, and he died of a brain injury. How old was he? He was 37. That's so then sad. there were no other incidents until 2020 when log flumes started sinking. There was, I remember seeing a video on Twitter of one of the log flumes like sinking and it was just flooded with water. And then there were two times that the log flumes were sinking in 2022. Were people, I don't want to say it. Well, nothing, no, it, it sank down and people were able to get out, but there were videos all over the internet. What were you going to say? Were people sinking it were on people, purpose? I don't know. Was it a big crowd? Like, I don't know. Was there a weight limit? Oh, no, I, honestly, I don't know. I think they were just old flumes. Oh, see, this is why. This ride had to be shut down. It's like poorly being maintained. They need to. When we went on, a, like what, a couple months ago? Yeah. I was looking around. And I said, this needs a fresh paint job. Yeah, but too. at that point, we already knew it was closing. So I was like, they're not going to put money into it now. They're about to shut it down. Mm -hmm. I say out with, the, out with the old and with the new. All, All right. right. Everyone loves a fresh ride. We can't wait to see it, Tiana. This is a really big secret. Thank God we're on a body of water. This is Confession Canoe. Secrets will be told, but we can never share them with anybody except Camp Shady Birch. We're on the open water. This is Confession Canoe. That was good. You sounded like you were at like Action Now News, like reporting live. Oh, that was a nice compliment. Thank you. Yeah. Guys, welcome back to Confession Canoe, a segment we don't do nearly enough. This is a part of the show where you can just say something that's been really weighing on you that you just need to get off your chest. And this camper that wrote in really did that. Let's get into it. The year was 2006. Side note, what a great year for music. I'm going to get into that further. I've always said that. Just Dance by Lady Gaga. I'm not sure. That just seems a little too early. We're gonna we're gonna shelf that. We're in the middle of a story here. Got it. Sorry, guys. The year was 2006. I was fresh out of first grade, and my mother insisted that I attend summer camp on theme. I was a very bubbly and outgoing little girl, and I had gone up to almost every child in my summer camp and asked them to be my friend. Unfortunately, I am not kidding when I tell you this. I asked well over 20 children to be my friend and not a single one of them said yes. I'm sad. That is like, that's, that's, that's bullying. That's awful. 
Out of first, 20 of them? First grade. Where's Vicious? That's hard, too, if you're, like, going to summer camp and you don't know anybody already. I know. I agree. I feel like this might have been a day camp, but let's continue. I was infuriated and extremely upset. Sounds like me. I was putting myself out there to hang with these stinky loser children, and they all decided <laughs> to shun me. <laughs> The anger in me started to build after each one declined my BFF offer. So I made the decision right there that I was going to rob these kids. Yes, theft. I asked to use the restroom and ran into the closet that contained all of the kids' belongings, went through their bags, and stole one thing from each of the children that had given me the cold shoulder. That's 20 different things. Yep. Once I got home, my mother was very confused about where I'd gotten all of these toys. I proudly told her what I had done and let her know that all of those kids deserved it. Needless to say, I never went back to that summer camp. So if you attended summer camp in 2006 at AFC in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, and lost one of your most prized possessions from your book bag, just know that it was me. Signed, Sticky Finger Sydney in Cabin 7. <laughs> Sydney's a savage. <laughs> That's like one township over from where I went to high school. I know. You're really close to there, isn't it? Yeah. Well, one item from 20 backpacks. Honestly, uh, deserved. If there's got, little, first off, little kids are kind of terrible. Yeah, but I feel like that was an outrageous amount of children to be so awful. Yeah. 20? I really hope you got some good stuff. I hope it wasn't just gel pens and stickers, okay? I'm hoping for maybe a, a little Nintendo DS. What else do they have? I used to have one of those DVD players that used to play. Oh, what? Video Now? A Video Now. I hope you got a Video Now. A Tamagotchi. That she, would be... Oh my God, where are you going to stuff all this? She stuff? said, don't worry about it, baby. I'm leaving and I'll never see y'all again. Six years old, a life of crime. I live for it. I love it. I honestly, if this was my kid, I'd be appalled. But then I'd be like, that's my kid. That's my kid. No. no disrespect in this house. Let me ask you a question I already know the answer to. Have you ever taken something from someone at school? Yes. I stole a North Face in high school. And when I went home, I wrote my initials in it. And I came back and I was like, this is my North Face, obviously. But guys, I'm not proud of this. This was 2012. My parents didn't have money. I was paying for my own car at the time, okay? And everybody at Dartmouth High School had black North Faces. And I had to steal one from a class. And should I say who it was? It, the, hey, this is Compassion I will. Canoe. Connor, if you ever hear this, I swear to God, if you reach out to me, I will personally, I'm not joking, I will send you a North Face or anything of equal, equal value. That was really bad. I can't believe I did that. Your eyes are getting wet. Because it was so, it's so embarrassing to think about that. I stole a sweatshirt from, it was a, a zip up. So I was so desperate to fit in. How awful was that? Yeah. Mrs. McPhee's darkroom photography class. I was third block. He was second. He left it. I saw, I stuffed it. I was, in, I was a sophomore in high school. I didn't know. It was awful. You saw it and you stuffed it. I did steal. I feel really guilty, guilty about that, Connor. And I went home and I put my initials in it. And if you hate me forever, I'll, I'll never forgive myself. And I know I was wrong, but I feel a little bit better that I've shared that. Yeah, confession canoe, it'll do that. That was my confession. Have you ever stole anything from anybody? I don't think so. Oh, well, that's good. You're a good, you're a good egg, though. I, I used to love to steal. In my early 20s, I used to steal a lot, like from Target and stuff. Sorry. Uh, I don't do that anymore. But you know what, though? When you're, I don't know. I'm going to say this. I'm going to be honest, okay? Sometimes life puts you in a corner and you don't have any other option but to survive, okay? I was living on my own at 20 years old off of serving wages in the middle of college, paying my way through. My parents never gave me a dime my entire life, okay? All right? I did it all myself, and I had to survive like some of my other campers out there. I'm not proud of it, but look where I am now. I've come a long way, and I would hope that I would pay it forward, and I feel like I'm not going to ever tell people my philanthropy. I think that's really braggy, but I do give back in a lot of different ways. I love that for your journey. That felt cathartic for me. Why? I don't know. Just living by curiously through you. Oh, by curiously. Who was the woman involved in this story? Okay. Next segment, please. <laughs> <laughs> Grab your bug juice and bear spray, campers. It's time to pack it up and take a hike. Campers, I hope we're all wearing sensible shoes. Someone called Dr. Scholes. It's time to take a hike. All I have is my Tevas. <laughs> Your what? Tevas. What's that? Oh my God. They're like the more crunchier Birkenstocks. They have a little Velcro, Velcro strap around the ankle, across the toe. You know what a Teva is? No, I only wear kitten heels. <laughs> oh, I forgot. A sensible kitten heel will do you good, campers. <laughs> So this is the part of the show where we talk about things that are grinding our gears. That we're just going to bitch a little for a little bit. And um, and yeah, we're just going to get a couple things off of our chest. Do you want to go first? Um, I don't care. You go first. Okay. What's been pissing me off lately? Just tell us. Um, 
I'm going to say high school class rings. Now, if you're listening to this and you have one of them on your finger, no offense, but take it off. Chuck it in the bin. We, it's such a scam. I remember being in high school and I was like, do I need this? And really thinking, and I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be something I'm going to pass down to my children. Um, And this can be, you know, it's going to be like so important. And I don't want to miss out on this because they had assemblies that we would go to $365 for a piece of metal to put on your finger. I'm about to go to college. I'm about to go into into debt, into student debt. And I'm, I'm going to put down a payment plan for a ring. I know. And not to be fresh, the actual designs of them, they're really gaudy and big. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the giant gemstone that you can pick. You want to put your birthstone on the front of it, have your high school name carved on the side, have your name carved on the side, a little emblem of the club that you were in. That's, it's corny. It's stupid. No one cares that you were in key club. You yeah. Make, it makes me want to key your car and club your face. Sorry. My dad was in the eighties and he got his. And I remember when I was in high school, I was like, not on the fence about it, but it came up in conversation and he was like, Zach, I'm going to tell you something. It's a different year than it was in the eighties. I don't think it's the same style, but yet they look the same. Why? Why do they look the same? Also, it just seems like they kind of use the fear kind of marketing tactic where it's like, you'll never, you'll, you'll really regret this. Let me tell you something. You know what I don't regret? What? Buying the class ring. I don't get it and I don't regret it. And you're telling me if I contact them right now and I said, can I get Mathacton High School class of 2011 with my name engraved on the side and an amethyst on the front? Like they they would gladly do that. They're like 365. Absolutely. We would do that for you. Some people did it though. Do you remember the people that did it? I do. And I think it's different if you go to university and especially a smaller university because I used to work at one and I think it's more popular to do that there. Really? Yeah. The university I attended, absolutely not. But the smaller one that I worked at, it was, I think, because it was more like communal and a little culty. I just feel like the aesthetics are off. Why aren't they offering more varieties of shapes and sizes? It's like, I don't want the aquamarine on the burnt gold giant. Like, all right, I, I don't need any attention to where I went to high school. My 10 year anniversary is this year. I would rather get, I wouldn't even say it. I would rather get hit by a lawnmower, ran over four times, spit out the back of it onto a wild mule. Okay, kicked in the teeth, then interact with some of these classmates and be like, Sir, what have you been up to? Oh my God, that sounds like an absolute nightmare. I saw a guy at a bar wearing one once. You know who he was with? Who? No one. Oh, you know when you would wear it? At the reunion. Remember this, everybody? Why would I go to the reunion? If you had one and you were going to go to the, the person who bought the ring is the person going to the reunion. Yes. And we are generalizing. So I feel like someone's going to write in and say, my husband has his and he wears it. I can just, I can see it. And that's in my okay. Guess what? Now. We're all entitled to our opinions here. You signed up to listen to a podcast with two sassy gays. You got our, you got our opinion on this one. Whether you wanted it or not. Oh, it's okay. Maybe, maybe they'll change. Honestly, I'm up for a new design. Maybe the sentiment is still appropriate and maybe hold some value, especially if you really enjoyed high school. But I just think the gaudiness of it needs to get redesigned. Maybe we can come up with a different plan. Maybe like a watch. That would be fun. A watch. I could do, and it, it doesn't have to be huge, and it can have like a little engraving on the inside of it if that's something you're into. Do you remember the watches that had like the water in them? No, you always knew these like weird trends. What yeah, was that? I'm starting to think that I, I had like a weird childhood that people aren't. No, you, on someone the same will page listen to this and be like, "Oh, I remember that one." Yeah, it was like it, it had water in it, and you you could like move it around. I think that sounds fun. They were really crappy. I do have something that I did do. What? Who was out there that put that silly little tassel over the rearview mirror? Guilty. You had to do that one, guys. Yeah. But the question was, how long did you keep it on for? Mine was only a year because then I went to college and I didn't have my car there. I feel like I could have had mine on for maybe over a year too. I think the people who are pushing it to the, I saw some people five years, let it go, yeah, let it go. It's also crazy because it's like the further you get away from high school, it's like that was only four years. And at the time we hadn't been living life for more than like 17 years. So it felt like such a long time. And I'm like, I have oatmeal in my pantry downstairs that has been there longer than four years. It's sentimental and a mouse lives in it. Leave him alone. Okay. His name is Winston. Winston little mouse. We love that. Oh, that's from cat dog. Is it? Winston? I don't know. Maybe. Or is that wish? No, that's wishbone. I don't. Anyway, 
What's what's grinding your gears? Other than gaudy commemorative jewelry. Um, my take hype this week is, have you seen um, the trailer for the new Amy Winehouse movie or just the pictures of it? Have you heard about it? I heard, is there a trailer out? No, there's no trailer. I should have oh, said just, that. Just the, yeah. I've seen the picture. Campers, they're making an Amy Winehouse biopic, and I am just appalled by this completely. Okay, first of all, the actress playing Amy Winehouse, her name is Marissa Abella. She physically resembles nothing of Amy. Her interviews about how she had to lose the weight to play Amy are a little too positive, as if Amy didn't suffer from bulimia. And it feels like the depiction of Amy that I've seen, okay, and I've only seen pictures. I haven't seen a trailer Maybe I'll feel differently in a while, but the pictures just feel very cartoonish, very Halloween-esque. It seems like they're really playing off that big beehive and a little like stone on our lip and they're like, oh, we got her down. I'm like, there's no, I'm not seeing any characterization from these photos that makes me believe that this is Amy. And it's a bigger discussion for me other than just like this movie. It's, I don't love the sensationalism around her life. Her life and specifically over like dead artists that have that had really troubled lives, okay? This one is a little like specific and I was trying to like figure out why I felt this way and I read a couple articles from people who were actually educated and well written and I was like, okay, I I understand a little bit more. So, first of all, she only passed away 12 years ago. Okay. Yeah. So it hasn't been that long. And also like this wasn't a woman who had like a very like soaring career and then a sad demise. Her entire kind of career was very troubling and a media frenzy. And I just feel like we never gave her a chance. And it feels like now that she's finally hit this pace 12 years later where people can discuss her and kind of separate that from her and just celebrate her as an artist. And we're not thinking about the tabloids. We're going to make a movie that's just about the tabloids again. Yeah. And Yeah. And, sorry, I didn't mean to no, go. Up, but I was going to say, and also like back then, we saw it with Britney Spears too. Say, where it it's was like, the same time frame too as that. Yeah, we didn't know. Well, a lot of us didn't know, but how toxic yes. all of it was. And everybody knew Amy Winehouse, but most of it was because she was being turned into like a, a satirical joke. Yeah. Of like, um, what was that? The date movie, I think it was called. It was like one of those spoof movies. And they had her in it and they just like really played into her being this drunk mess with like saber tooth tiger teeth. And that was like the whole, yeah. throughout the whole movie, that's what it was. Kim Kardashian was in that movie. It, okay. So back then, it, it's no defense. We, we, some of us, we didn't know. We didn't know how bad it was. Like even when the whole thing with Britney happened, we weren't aware of the way that media was kind of making this so much worse than what it actually was and wasn't looking at it as a cry for help and Amy was the exact same time frame and I feel like now we have grown and we do know so why are we going to put this back on this woman who now we look back at our behavior as a community on her and be like wait that was that was not the right way to like approach this but now we're going to sensationalize it and make it a movie because what you saw the Elvis movie do good you saw like I don't know Freddie Mercury's movie do good it seems like did you pick her because you knew there'd be an audience for it or did you pick her because you really wanted to tell her story because she had not one good person in her corner everybody was exploiting her and guess who's promoting the movie saying that they're so excited for it her dad her father and guess who was terrible to her her, her father her father could have pulled her at so many moments, but he knew that was a paycheck. It's it's like Britney all over again. And thank God we still have Britney, okay? Because it was a very similar path and Amy's ended tragically. And I'm just really disappointed about this. Maybe I'll feel differently when I see a trailer, but it Probably doesn't not. feel like this is a story that's going to focus on like really celebrating her. It feels like it's a, like the still of her in the street, like screaming and crying. It's like, all right, if you're going to do that, you better show the beautiful woman that she was and the music that has changed and shaped all of her lives. I love her so much. And I just, it's, I think it's disappointing. I so. agree. And I think it's, there's also a difference between a documentary and a biopic. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the biopic route, what, what are, what's going, if you really want to commemorate her life, I know there's already a doc, there's multiple documentaries out. Just, I, I don't know, make another one. If, if you feel like so driven to do this, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't support it. Sometimes we can make a biopic about the right person who had a long, long, beautiful career, peppered past. But a girl who had six six years, essentially, in the spotlight that drove her to die of alcoholism, of the stress of it all, I don't think this is the one we need to be focusing on right now, okay? I think we should be better as a society. And at least if you're going to do it, pick a better-looking Amy, okay? Insult to injury, okay? 
she looks awful in that. I'm sorry. It made me upset. I'm upset. I love Amy and I'm a defender. Anyways, that was Take a Hike. Do you think the new counselor likes the top bunk or the bottom bunk? Over. Either way, I'm giving them my boondoggle keychain. Over. Crush of the week. 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 It's the crush of the week. It's crush of the week. I wasn't sure we were going at the end there. Oh, sorry. I just got a little carried away. We were talking about Disney World for two seconds, and I just got those got running through my veins. I loved it. Who are you crushing on this week? Who do you want to kiss? So, my crush of the week is Alexis Nicole, a.k.a. Mm -hmm. Black Forager on Instagram and on TikTok. If you guys don't know her, you have to go follow her. I have been following her for years. I remember two years ago, there was a, around Christmas time, there was an Amazon commercial, and she was in it, and I was gagged. I was gooped. I was souped. And I, I, I lost my marbles. I was like, oh my God, I've been like following this girl because she's a forager and she basically just makes videos by herself and is running through the woods and like eating berries and sorry, the batteries are charged and are, and she's like eating berries and, and mushrooms and stuff. And then I saw her on, I, I had no idea like how much she had been blowing up and she was just on uh, Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, one of the Jimmy's and uh, absolutely fantastic for her. But do you follow her? Yeah, of course. So I just want to read you. I just made a couple notes of the things that she makes out of finding things in nature. She is so talented. And she's also really funny. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to cut you off. No, that's fine. She's funny. And I love when she um, she sings sometimes as like a joke. But I'm like, okay, wait, you you can sing. Like, let's not be coy. All let's right. drop Let's drop that album. Okay, so recently she made ice cream from snow, which I'm like, okay, I've, I've like tried to dabble in that before. She made Sprite, the soda, Sprite, from pine needles, from oh. her hand, her her wreath that she f like made from stuff in her yard. Oh, wow. I didn't see that one. Yeah. Jesus. And she also made crab cakes from lion's mane mushroom, which mm -hmm. apparently is really great for you. I learned that from Courtney Carnage. I machine. have lion's mane mushroom downstairs because when I was trying to get Adderall one time without a prescription impossible i found out that lion's mane is really good for energy and memory it's in the cabinet why have i not been taking it it's a supplement you need it for your memory loss for sure wait we really have it yeah it's in a little it's expensive i got it off Amazon, like 25 dollars for a bottle of like 50 of them but yeah lion's mane <gasps> maybe i'll take one after this you should i'll report back next week in housekeeping guys um but yeah my my crush of the week is alexis nicole and i just i adore her and i'm glad that she's doing big things me too i have told you this on multiple occasions maybe this spring we can do it i would love to do it here at camp shady birch but i just i want to go foraging and i know that they have classes where like you can go out with an instructor and they'll tell you all the things i don't necessarily think i'd be good at it um but i just have such an admiration for people who can like walk and be like oh yeah that's a, a dingleberry mushroom and they're poisonous but don't confuse it with its twin sister, um, Ashley Olsen mushrooms, which you can actually eat. Yeah, my friend Corey does it all the time. Wait, really? Yeah, Corey Arruda, he does it all the time. I've never met a forager. It's a real talent, and I think it has to come from a place of passion. I think it's a lot of studying, and it's a lot of like just a love of a love of the wildlife. If we could get her to come to Shady Birch, Camp Shady Birch and to do a little foraging course. I think the campers would live for that. She's so talented. And I'm so excited to see somebody in such a creative space do so well because nobody does it like her. No, and it's so like, I know that there's communities who do it, but I feel like it's so niche and unique. And she makes it so interesting. I just like, I she's like, you can make food out of trees that you walk past in your neighborhood. Let me show you how to do it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, you about? just see her during dandelion season. She don't oh stop. Oh my God, dandelion tea. Have you ever heard of it? Because I hadn't. She fried dandelions once, like the heads of them. And yeah. Dipped them in an aioli. And I said, you know what? Anything fried's for me. Mm, that would be good. I would love to. Maybe I'll look into that and we can do that this spring. Would you do it with me? Yeah, I would do it with you. I would try it. I don't, I, I like, I don't think it's my passion and my like, heart. I don't think I'm going to continue doing it. But I, do I think it would be a fun activity? I'm all about the activity. And I grew up in the woods. I was always in the woods as a kid. But I never had, I was always like playing like make believe not really make believe not really eating <laughs> yeah i was like making mud pies and trying to eat that um i think yeah we just definitely need like a medical professional with us that needs to be like can you check my can we just do the class can, that's can you easier check my halloween candy yeah we can do a class let's do it okay okay that is my crush of the week who are oh. you crushing on 
I'm crushing on Dunkin' Donuts or just Dunkin' oh. now. I can't believe I've been talked about this. Me neither. We were there this morning. Well, so when I, 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 if you don't know, I've been a fan of Dunkin' my entire life. They're like a big reason to look the way that TikTok is kind of supporting me is a big chunk of because of Dunkin'. Like I've been working them forever, but I grew up in South eastern south coast massachusetts we bleed we run on duncan like duncan's in our veins i've never seen anywhere run on duncan the way you guys run on duncan well our duncans are superior they run really well the coffee is very consistent and i will say the new york duncans are really great too pennsylvania duncans not as good pennsylvania runs on wawa yeah that's why all the coffee beans are going to wawa not to duncan but no i thought i would just talk about it i thought you know, i really do love the brand and when i first moved here i was like i'm gonna step away from my duncan obsession i'm gonna really support local which i still do but lately i've been like hey i just want my cold brew with almond milk it's so consistent it tastes the same time, thing every single time for me and i love it and i know where to go now and i've been going this whole week and it really gets me going heart wise energy wise it also kind of runs right through me in the right way like in the <laughs> way that I want. Yeah. I like to wake up in the morning and know that everything in my body is moving fluidly and Duncan will make sure that that happens. I love that. I love that for your journey. You love the hash browns. You used to not like the hash browns. I used to not like the hash browns because in Pennsylvania, they all taste burnt. They taste nasty. It tastes like yeah. the the little whatever they put them in hasn't been cleaned. And then everywhere else honestly tastes fine. But the few local ones in Pennsylvania that I had been going to, they just didn't taste good. They taste like dirty frying pan. I know. No, they do. And it's because they're, it's because those people are not cleaning their machine. It's, just a, it's poorly run. It's not Duncan fault they're giving the same product to everybody it's right. it's the franchisee um if my perfect duncan order were to be given to me right now it would be a medium cold brew with just a little bit of almond milk i want a sausage egg and cheese wake up wrap a side of hash browns and a french queller donut that is hitting on all cylinders mm. for me i'm set what would you get do you get any of the sandwiches there um i got the what sandwich did egg i get and there cheese, before I guess? they had the it was like an egg white flatbread that i used to get mm -hmm. um because there was one right outside of my apartment in college i used to get that a lot um but i don't really usually get their food i'll get the hash brown but i will say the donuts i love a cream donut i hate powdered sugar on the outside of donuts oh i used to, I, I used to hate it i love it now i'm growing up i just don't like i don't like powdered sugar no, I, I know. Well, you know what, speaking of growing up i i sometimes think about my coffee orders as a teenager I would get like a French vanilla extra, extra light, like disgusting. Like the coffee would be the color of like, I don't know, an eggshell white on a wall. Was your coffee ever that light when you were growing up? I really never put milk in my coffee. Yeah, you're a Satanist. Look at you in all black, just like your coffee. I'm <laughs> sick of you. Such a performance artist. My, that, my, my coffee order is always an iced black coffee, just wherever. Yeah, well, I like that too. I like that when I'm feeling fit, you know? Like, nothing makes me feel a little bit more sassy and like, uh, than ordering a hot black coffee. It's like, I'm on the go. So actually, this morning, after I drank my iced black coffee, I think I drank it a little too fast because I went to the store and I couldn't, my hands were shaking so bad from the caffeine that I couldn't get my, my chip in the card reader. That's because Duncan is high test. People don't believe it. I'm like, no, 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 no. It really is. It gets me, like, jittery. But honestly, that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking to have a casual caffeinated experience. I've chosen to have coffee over a different beverageino, okay? I want to be, you know? And does coffee ever make you anxious? No. I will say, and I can tell which episodes it was, because at the very beginning, I can tell when I've had two iced coffees, two black iced coffees, because I'm off in the beginning of the episodes, and I know it's because I'm anxious because I had too much caffeine. Yeah, well, that could happen with any caffeine for sure. Yeah, no, I, I if I have too much coffee, even if I just have like two, two little old cups of coffee, I just need to cut it. I need to relax. I need to slow down. I can't have liquid in a cup for more than five minutes, no matter yeah. what liquid it is. I can't. Yeah, you're a fast drinker. You always have been. I am. I love you, Duncan, so much. And I love you, Alexis Nicole. What song's been stuck in your head all week? Welcome to Camp Songs. She got that laffy taffy, laffy taffy, kiss, 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 kiss you, my even now, Milky Way. It's Chris Brown and it's, it's, it's lovey dovey, not laffy taffy. Okay, but. I don't even know what I said, and good thing I got it wrong because he sucks. Anyways, this is, so I'm sorry I haven't said that. This is Song of the Week. What are the, what is the soundtrack to our lives? What are the vocal notes we're hitting? I love that one. <laughs> I love what's going on right now. What's happening right now? You, you're just singing, you're being silly. I'm on my last brain cell. 
what are God, you Lord s- knows me too. What are you singing this week? My camp song this week is I Blame You by Paris Hilton. Big week for Paris. Paris, congratulations. Uh, as we're recording this, just yesterday, she announced that she had a baby via surrogate. And congratulations to her and her husband. Big news. I love that little picture she posted too. It's like, it's the baby holding around her perfectly manicured nails. And it's so crazy that like, babies don't do it for me. I'm sorry. I don't get like the big ooh and ah. I like babies when they hit around four months because then they can support their head and I get less stressed. But I, there's <sighs> nothing like seeing a little baby's hand around a finger. That is, isn't it crazy when you see it every yeah. single time? The human body. For women out there, anyone out there having babies, I'm just so impressed by you. What an incredible journey. And to bring life into this world, it's insane. And I'm so excited for Paris. I love her so much. Me too. We've been honestly talking about babies and pregnancy for the past like four episodes. <laughs> yeah. Well, guess what? It's what causes the world to go round. Okay? You're not wrong. Circle of life and Paris is contributing. So I was going to do Stars Are Blind, but I feel like that's like over done some would say not done enough it's my favorite it is it's a great song and then i was gonna do nothing in this world but i was like what can i do that's like recently been done that i absolutely love and it is i blame you by paris hilton and if you haven't heard it you have to give it a listen it's good it's good it's catchy it's candy for the brain what year did that come out it's pretty recent right 2020 i blame you i blame you i feel good i feel good I blame you. I blame, I blame you. you. Wow, she is a vocalist. You, how did she write that? How did she come up with those words? I, I, I'm almost in a trance. And uh, her podcast, um, that was the theme song of the podcast. And when she would do ad breaks, sometimes that's all I hear is like the breakdown of the music after the chorus. And she's like, get all of your Paris Hilton's fragrances now at Macy's, your fragrance destination, like playing over the music. I, it's a little thing that, it's a little inside joke that I have with with myself. I like that. I love Paris Hilton. I love all of her music. I feel like of all the, what's that? Like that's that like social media influencer, celebrity to musician pipeline of all of them. She's in my top for sure because stars are, stars are blind are, are it's, it's like one of my favorite songs of all time, actually. Still but on top. This one is, um, it's cute. It's, it's not like, it's not going to break my records, but um, I do think it's fun. It did show up on my Spotify top songs in 2020. It was that and Rain On Me were yeah. my top songs. That it really makes sense for that year for you. And then it was Slipknot. Yeah, and continuing that that same trend for you. Yeah. So what is your camp song? So my camp song is my gay awakening song. This is the song that played when I said, oh, wait, I am a gay man here. It is Buttons by Pussycat Dolls. But my phone, my computer was doing this like weird quick key thing where it was adding letters in because my cursor was in a weird spot. So I actually wrote down Buttons by Pussburger. Burger, I can't doll. So, yeah, but it was Buttons. I think we have a title for that episode. No, that's not a title. That's too much. Um, No, it really is like one of my favorite songs of all time. And guess what year it came out? 2006. 2006. What a year for music. Seriously amazing. Um, I prefer the Snoop Dogg version. I like him on it. It's As the we same, all do. It's the same song, mm-hmm. but then he kind of comes in in the beginning, comes in in the end. I like when he goes, yeah, little mama, you looking good. I say, you want to play with the player from the hood? And Nicole Scherzinger is approaching him with some weird hood on, and she's like doing this little like left, right, left, right. It's like, I think she thinks she looks good in that. That's the only time I've ever seen her. I'm like, girl, you look goofy. <laughs> Girl, you look goofy. <laughs> Fix yourself. Fix yourself. But that song is Sex on Wheels. Those girls give it. And that and I watched that growing up. And it, and I that's why I really knew I was gay. I was 11 years old. And everyone was talking about the song. It was like on the top of the charts. And everyone, all the boys in my class were talking about how hot the girls were. And I was thinking to myself, like, I don't want to like fuck these girls. I want to be these girls. I want to be doing that little dance chair routine. I want to be in that tube grabbing the things. The little diamond curtain roll. Like, I like all that. The chair spin. Is that real? It kind no, of looks CGI. I think it, they, I feel like they isolate it and they spun it up. Like, it, because it, it's a spin, but then it like spins a little fast. But yeah. also it could be CGI because at one point they like jump on the ground. The entire ground comes up in the worst CGI flames I've ever seen. Mm. Um, but it, it's such a good song. Um, and I was thinking about myself. I was like, Okay, like, who do I love from the Pussycat Dolls? Obviously, my favorite is Nicole. Yeah, I, I think, think she she is. She we've is had the, the discussion. She's the doll. The rest are the Pussycats. Yeah, I'm sorry. But Melody, 
Come on. I don't. I couldn't point her out in a crowd. <sighs> you are not a real Pussycat Doll fan. I never said I was. Every Pussycat Doll fan knows who Melody is because Melody was brought into the group later because the the group needed a little bit more bass. Melody. A, Melody. Okay. Is it Melody or Melanie? I don't know. No, don't confuse me. It's Melody. She brings in a little bit more of a vocal security to the group. Nicole Scherzinger is a good singer. Her tone, it's a little interesting. I don't even know what it is, but they need someone a little more meat, a little more bass. Hmm. I don't know. And that's why they brought Melody in later. And in and, and, and the songs, you will notice that there's some like vocal runs in it. It's like, who is that? Because it's not Nicole. It's always Melody. Melody's the only one who ever gets like a little glimpse of Shimmer because it's basically it should be called Nicole Scherzinger and the Pussy Gun Dolls. Would you say Melody brings the runs? Melody does bring the runs. I think it's a weird way to put it because I think that sounds like diarrhea and I don't think she'd love that. But it, it's true. Vocally, she does bring the runs. Um, can I guess a name from for another one? Yeah. <clears throat> Abby. No, but close. Danny with an I. No, but also would make sense. All right. Well, this guessing game is not going well for me. I like Carmi. I don't know if it's Carmi or Carmi. It's C-A-R-M-I-T. She's like the girl with the, the red bangs and she got that cut jawline. She's hot. Okay. I always liked her. The blondes, um, the blondes, actually, I love them all. One of the blondes I think is controversial now. Some things have come out about her. So I'm not going to talk further on them. I'm not really sure. But Carmeet was always my fave um, other than Nicole. But I don't know. I just love that song. And I was playing it today. I was like just getting my oats. It really hypes me up. It has 713 million streams or views on YouTube alone. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy, but I'm not surprised. I think I was at least 20,000 of them. <laughs> I love it. I love Snoop Dogg and I love the Pussycat Dolls. And you loosen up my buttons, babe. Uh, oh, wait, actually, that's actually, truly like me sitting down at, at Thanksgiving dinner. I'm like, let me just loosen up my buttons. I loosen up my buttons before any dinner at this point. True. I'm not going out to eat to eat a salad, okay? I can have greens at home. I want something hearty sponsored by the Pussy Get Dog. <laughs> Loosen up my buttons, babe. Uh huh. Scary stories around the campfire. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> that was my voice effects for um, UFO. That was all with my mouth. Wow. A lot of people don't know this. I minored in special effects vocal recordings in elementary school. I love that. It's a small program in an Eastern European town. Um, it's only available to the top students in America. I don't know what I am saying. Anyways, <laughs> welcome to Scary Stories Around the Campfire, a lovely little segment we do at Camp Shady Birch. We're here to spook you, to embarrass you, to share in the fun with all of you campers. Thanks for submitting in these stories. Counselor Jonathan's going to read it for us today. Is it a good one? I think it's a terrifying one. Oh, it's scary this week? Yes. <gasps> we have a scary one. We never get scary ones. <laughs> Okay, so this camper wrote in. I recently told a scary story at dinner with my friends and from the sheer shock and horror on their faces, realized it might be better suited to a scary story around the campfire moment. So here it goes. Thank you. <laughs> when I was around nine or 10 years old, my older brother and I were hanging out at our grandparents' house for the day. My grandmother and I were baking her famous chocolate chip cookies in the kitchen, our favorite bonding activity. It was always my job to stand on a little stool near the KitchenAid mixer and pour in the ingredients while Granny would take care of the actual mixing. On this particular occasion, I tossed in some brown sugar. Granny set the mixer to mixing and walked to the other side of the kitchen. My favorite part of baking is always eating the ingredients. So I turned around with my back to the KitchenAid and began partaking in some delightful brown sugar. At the time, I had long, long, long Rapunzel hair, which was hanging loose and free like the wind. All of a sudden, I felt a hard tug on my hair, and my head was yanked backwards towards the KitchenAid. I screamed in fright while Granny turned fast as lightning towards me, a look of pure horror on her face I will never forget. She ran to the KitchenAid, turned off the mixer, and tried to delicately pry the strands of hair from the dough. Weirdly enough, there was absolutely no blood. It reminds me of that scene in Saw with the with the braid. Do you remember I, that part? I don't, but I can picture it. Yeah, it's like a, bra a this woman's long braid is like in these gears, and like every time it's like basically scalping her. Or did you see um, Final Destination Two? Yeah, the elevator part. I don't remember. Babe. The the guy has like mannequin arms for some reason, and they have hooks on them that would like hook into the mannequin, and it gets hooked on the lady's 
the lady's um, braid and she tries to run out and the door closes on her head and then the elevator, of course, starts moving, thus decapitating her. Horrifying. Um, sorry, back Horrifying to the scary visual. story. The mixer ripped one big chunk straight off the back top left corner of my head <sighs> in one fell swoop. I honestly barely remember it hurting. It was more so the shock of it all and me crying. Granny did her best to retrieve my hair from the dough and we ended up baking the cookies anyway. Oh. Dear God. <laughs> I remember my older brother finding... This is like... Okay, my... It's making me feel some type of way. I remember my older brother finding pieces of hair in his cookies, but we tried to soldier on and make the best of a hairy situation. A laughing emoji. At least she has like a good sense of humor about this. Yeah. Uh, to make matters stranger, my parents took me to a doctor not too long after that day to make sure everything was good. The doctor said I was experiencing alopecia, which for anyone who might not know is when your hair begins to fall out in sections, yep, yep. which clearly wasn't the case in this situation. I guess they told the doctor the doctor still wouldn't change her diagnosis after we explained the whole mixer situation. That's weird. Yeah, she's too proud to be like, no, 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 I know what I'm seeing here. It's like, no, 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 girl. The hair got ripped out by a stand mixer. Like, what? And she's like, no, babe, you have alopecia. Okay, anyway. So she ended up trying to come up with some cute and fun hairstyles to hide the bald spot through her school year. And now her hair has grown back and she has not had any problems since. Signed, pony up and eat the cookies in California. So, yeah, if you're going to be baking, put that hair up. That is going to be one that I don't forget. There was one time in my personal life, I used to go to these acting classes and we would have to put on showcases. And one of the class, I don't remember what this was even for, but we had to bring in something creative um, that made a noise that like wasn't too loud so we could like express ourselves with shit. So this one girl brought in a power drill without the bits in it. That it was just loud. the power drill. It was loud. And that wasn't the problem. And this, it was like basically a music. There was like 20 of us who were probably, I think I was in third grade at this point. And her, she went like this to her friend. Her friend's hair got wrapped up in it. And I remember seeing her face because we were all like goofing off making the song. And it just, oh my God. It, and it went so, and she tried to undo it, but we were little. So she didn't know. So she just kept going. So it was like straight up into her scalp. And it was horrifying. They had to call the parents in. They ended up, um, I think they used like a lot of, some kind of oil. I think it was vegetable oil and like margarine to get it out. It was bad. Oh no. I hate that. I feel like long hair is such a disaster always with like incidents. I always think about people who like are blowing out candles and they almost like light their hair on fire and yeah. stuff. I feel really bad for this camper. I'm glad you can laugh about it now, but that was a really scary story. And poor granny, like granny was like just trying to have a good memory with you. And now she's like, gets to call your mom and be like, well, shit. <laughs> she's been scalped. She's been scalped and we put it in the cookies anyways. And they're delicious. We'll send you home with a bunch. Don't worry. Well, thank you for sharing, Camper. And if you guys have any stories you want to submit to us, send it on into what is our email? Campcounselorspod at gmail.com. And don't you ever let a doctor tell you you have alopecia if it's incorrect, okay? Stand up for your rights. Advocate for yourselves, campers. And with that being said, lights, lights out, campers. campers.